Yes, they're pink, they're gobble back ears, and are placed on the top of our sushi. That salmon, I find them completely fascinating. Did you know that they're born as swimmers? Their future is programmed into their genes. From the beginning of their existence, they know everything they need to know. They were born for reproduction, adventure, and death. Every year during the salmon run, when the salmon migrate from the oceans to the rivers, they spawn and then die naturally if a bear hasn't eaten them first. It's carnage! Mass suicide, if you like, seems to be so unreasonable, but so strongly determined. While dreaming about salmon, a total sense of jealousy engulfed my blobbins. I mean, millions of people who I see throughout their entire life, trying so hard searching for meaning of existence, but you, you fish, already have one. It was a completely irrational way of thinking, but often six-year-olds are full of cynicism and indignation. I was especially outraged by the idea that human beings must learn throughout their limited life to reach a degree of enlightenment. Why should we spend our time so hard trying to remember the knowledge which once invigorated in our brain, but was turned into ash or exile or lost breath? Therefore, I deem the Pacific salmon to be a blessed cheat for passing down everything without any needs for postnatal learning. But I am still a human who has an opportunity to learn. Luckily, I've come to realize that it's unfortunate. And you would also be happy to hear that I've given up on comparing myself to Simon, because we, as human beings, should harness our ability to pursue knowledge of a valid destiny in itself. Once, a psychology teacher asked me, well, if you don't learn and never progress, what's the use of the creation of human beings then? Initially, I found this question absurdly amusing. We wake up, we have it downstairs, we commute between classrooms in the hustle and bustle. I then stop the question to be as ridiculous as you're asking me why we should use our mouth for eating and speaking. Still, however, I followed up trying to solve this inquiry as it might offer me with self comfort. So, first, let's trace back to the point where our life begins. Imagine all the species on Earth are standing in a queue from the same starting line. They are all fighters, as new but popping them from the earth, as the first crab appears on the axe shell, as the fence heart starts bumping. The long and desire to survive has driven us firmly depend on ourselves to compete for resources. Through natural evolution, we found out that it rested on the shoulders of our great ancestors. It was a one day morning, long after they straightened up their back and were able to stand. In a sudden, they opened their eyes. These eyes are so wide, which embraces everything that's directly coming up to them. And in that instance, did they realize that they're really seeing things. With a perspective, with this perspective that we call it a self, then, with this big perspective, we begin to realize and know. I've witnessed the power of knowing, learning, and knowledge by myself. Once, a truck had carried me into the valley in the west of China to do some volunteer teaching. It was a November night, a sand the dark room, hush. The sun full of big snow outside, silence my The dog was gone. The world outside was dangerously cold, and as I opened up my door at daybreak, and I stepped out into the snow-covered yard, one of my students, a skinny little girl who only reached the waist in height, ran up to me in the greatest delight, shouting out, Look, snow! Rather than, Kan Xue. This region, being the poorest region in China, is often blocked by savage snowfalls. It is also surrounded by rugged mountains. When the dry season comes, not even a single stream flows into the ridge, but however every year, books and passionate people flow in like streams. None of the children I've contacted are in despair or lost. 
However, curiosity and faith are glittering in their eyes. In that instance, the snow seems to be miles away. I've come to realize that it's a fortune. And no matter how physically separated human beings are from civilization, this innate sense of learning, knowledge, and wonder is instilled in us all. If we say that this sense is an indispensable key for the kids in the valley to get rid of their plight, then this sense to us will be a gift. After research, I found there are 6,500 spoken languages in the world today. More than 250,000 words in English language. And almost 130 million books are published in the world. Behind those numbers, we actually do more. The Genius Book of World Records has more than 40,000 records on their database. Besides some of the strange physical records we attempt to break, most are learned skills that we demonstrate. For the world's closest men, it only took him 4.22 seconds to solve a Rubik's Cube. The limits that we could break beyond the development of our cognitive thoughts is more than the imagination of yours and mine. Without learning the skills, we cannot fulfill the wonder of what the human experience might be. We start our journey of knowledge from subtlety. Think of an humble apple. When the world was created, it served as a lure which stretched Adam and Eva into the abyss of wickedness. Then we break the captivity to freely imagine. Trace back to the 16th century, it was a silent cosmic messenger who hid the men called Isaac Newton and for whom discovered the secret of Earth from its heart. On the first day of April, 1976, Steve Jobs announced the establishment of Apple Inc., which opened up a brand new era to human technological breakthrough. An apple is still an apple after all. And I am still a human who has an opportunity to learn.